Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time, and this week's topic, guys, is when the market speaks the loudest. You see, if you don't understand the direction of the market or what direction it's likely going to go, you're gonna have a very hard time being a successful trader, okay? Because 80 plus percent of all stocks move with the market, okay? So if you're not sure about the direction of the market, you're probably not gonna be sure about 80% of the stocks that are out there either, okay? Now I understand we're looking for relative strength and relative weakness and stocks that are unique and on their own page. I get all of that. However, understanding market bias might be one of the single most important things you need to do as a trader other than say money management because that's always number one. So today we're gonna talk about when the market speaks the loudest. We're gonna talk about market cycles, different market stages from stage one, two, three, and four, how to handle those stages, what those stages look like, how those stages act. Then we're gonna merge it with stock so you can see the market here and the stock over here and how we put those together to turn that into profitability and making money, okay? It's a very powerful lecture because again, the market is always right. Your opinion, that's one thing, but the market is always right. So you need to better understand how the market trades, what the price action of the market is, because if you don't, you will struggle as a trader. All right, guys, look, if you like these videos, man, click that like button, smash hammer that subscribe button. Make, it, make me wanna do these videos, right? Get people to watch them, show them to your friends, do all that good stuff, all right? Cause it's the best trading information on the web. All right, I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is when the stock market speaks the loudest. Um, most of everything that we do in trading revolves in some way, shape, or form around the stock market, right? Um, and the reason this is important is because even when you're dealing with relative strength and relative weakness, the market can bamboozle your trade, okay? And we just found out that on MO, right? We shorted MO and the market ripped higher, $6 higher. And MO was weak all morning, all morning, all morning. And the market just took off and it took MO with it. Um, and the reason this is important is because even if you're trading relative strength or relative strength or relative weakness, you still need to have a clear and firm understanding of the market and the next likely direction of the market. Okay, um, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. When the stock market speaks the loudest, how to develop a little bit of a bias, how to understand the likely next direction in the market. Um, because if you can't sort that out, you're going to have a hard time as a trader. Even as a scalp trader, you're gonna have a hard time. Understanding market pivot, market direction is an important part um, of making money in this business. But before we get into that, we must first talk about when will the insanity stop? And this week, well, happy holidays. We're not gonna talk about when will the insanity stop, why? Um, it's Hanukkah, Christmas is nearly upon us, and I just thought, you know what? Let's spare somebody this week, okay? Because every week we fillet somebody, and let's give them a holiday break. Um, so happy holidays on the when will the insanity stop. Um, we'll get, don't worry, we'll get back at it in full swing uh, next lecture. Uh, there are plenty. I have a, still a stack of, of when will the insanity stop content. You know, it's, it's hard to run out of that stuff. There's actually that many. Like, it's, like you could never keep up with it. That's how crazy people are. Um, so happy holidays. We'll take a break from it this week, okay? Yes, exactly. It's the live trader's version of saving a turkey from death during Thanksgiving. I'm pardoning, I'm pardoning whose ever turn it was this week. All right, let's dig in. The market is your guide, um, and it is, right? The market is always right, don't fight it. You hear me say this frequently, and it, sometimes people go, yeah, 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 yeah. But it really is, okay? And the market isn't one thing. It's made up of many, many, many things, whether it's you trading a stock, whether it's a hedge fund manager, whether it's a pension fund, um, you know, whether it's your parents buying a long-term position, whatever. It's made up of a lot of different pieces. Um, and there is, 
no right or wrong to it. It just is, right? The market isn't either right nor wrong. The market just does what it does. Um, most stocks follow the market. The vast majority of stocks follow the market. And when the market's on a ringer and it you know, pushes up you know, 3% in one day, almost all stocks follow it. I would say on days like that, 98% of stocks follow the market. Very few stocks don't follow the market when the market has an extreme move in one direction or another. When the market has an average day's move, fewer stocks follow, but, but most still follow. That makes sense. So I would say good 80 plus plus percent of stocks follow the market. Um, we always talk about our job is to find the stocks that don't. Well, that is true. Okay, we do try to find stocks that are unique, stocks that are on their own page, but there's nothing wrong with trading stocks that go with the market. We traded Apple today, Unmall traded Apple today, Apple went with the market today. You guys traded ACN today with Jeff, ACN went with the market today, right? There's nothing wrong with trading stocks that go with the market. Um, and in fact, most of the time, it's an easier way to make money. But to do that, you have to know the market, right? So when you think about it, most trader losses can be attributed to being on the wrong side of the market. Ding, 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 ding. Mo stopped out today. We were on the wrong side of the market today, right? We knew the market had some strength. I just didn't think it was going to fire up this much today. So we traded against the trend on Mo, and it bit us today. It happens, all right? It happens um, because with Mo, it had great relative weakness. And we thought, oh, well, it's going to going to go lower because the market's kind of, you know, looking a little bit tired. But nope, the market fit, fired up and ripped. So let the market be your guide and don't marry your bias. What I'm saying is the market can turn on a whim sometimes out of nowhere. Usually there's some type of news report that suggests maybe it should move a different direction. But use the market you want to try as much as you can to stay with the market direction i'm telling you even if you're trading a stock on its own page you still want to try to be with the market as much as you can i mean it's like a rising tide lifts all boats you don't want to swim against the current that's hard work yeah you can do it and you can make money doing it it's just a lot more work and then on the flip side of that is always prepare for the opposite of your bias right? Have a bias. Every day, have a bias. Every day. But prepare for the other side of your bias because you're going to be wrong sometimes. And when you're wrong, if you don't have any other options, anything that you've prepared for, a plan B, well, you're not going to be able to make much money that day, are you? And it's okay if you want to walk away on a day that the market's doing something that, that you're not prepared for. That's fine. But you should prepare for both sides every day. So if you don't understand what the market is saying, stand aside not trading is a valid position. That's what I really want you guys to take away from all of this as well. Not trading is actually a position. It's a position not to take something. It's a valid position. And then we've heard, you've heard me say it before, it's nothing new, but ego has no place in the market. None, none. Just because you think something should happen doesn't mean it will. I'm gonna repeat it. Just because you think something should happen or it's supposed to happen, it doesn't mean it will. We've said it before, I said it yesterday, the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. So make sure you understand what it is that you're doing, stay within your trading plan, and stay within your lane, okay? Don't do foolish stuff. Today, as you guys know, I told the room, I broke my plan today. I broke my plan by two pennies. Those two pennies were worth almost $4,000. Two pennies, $4,000. I moved my stop up, literally a nickel, more than I should have. The stock went down two pennies into that nickel, would have held the original stop, and then it fired up. Don't be a hero. Don't let your ego trade for you. Don't do things that are outside of your trading plan. Just don't do it. Sure, once in a while you'll break your plan and you'll get away with it. But that is not a good long-term approach and it shows a weak mental mind. And you don't want to put yourself in that position. The other thing it does, it's probably the worst of all, it starts to develop bad habits. And the worst thing you can do is be right with a bad habit, right? You don't want to do that, okay? Now, be a professional. This is kind of what I was leading into the last couple comments. Develop a daily market bias. Scan according to this bias. So when you wake up, you're going to look at the market first, 
First thing you're gonna do is take a look. What are the markets up to today? Are they up, are they down, are they sideways? Where are they at? And don't worry, we're gonna look at this in a minute, okay? But you're gonna scan according to that bias. And yes, the bias is not always easy, all right? Then you're gonna scan gaps, your daily watch lists, your carryover list, ideas you get from the chat room. Guys, I'm telling you, the chat room comes up with some really damn good ideas. So when somebody types in an idea, you should take a look at it. Why? Because it might take you three seconds to take a look at that idea. So in the pre-market, there might be 10 or 15 or 20 ideas people type in. What's it going to take you? Three minutes to look through those ideas? And you may find a diamond in the rough. You may find something like, wow, how did I not see that? Right? And it happens to me all the time. I scan the gap list pretty well, but almost every morning there's something, whether Unmall or somebody else types in, I look and go, oh, that's interesting. How did I miss it? Almost every day. Right? So take advantage of that. Take advantage of being in the chat room and other people's expertise, not just mine or Unmalls, but other people as well, because that one idea might be worth thousands of dollars to you today. Right? So scan the gaps, the daily watch list, the carryover list, the chat room ideas, okay? Don't marry it, be objective. Prepare for other possibilities. And this is why every day, every day, even if my bias is dead long, I give you guys a long and a short list. There's never a day I don't give you both a long and a short list because we need to know just in case. What if we're wrong? And we're gonna be, right? We're going to be, all right? Let the market be your guide. Don't marry your bias, okay? If you don't understand what the market is saying, stand aside. Why am I putting this in here two slides in a row? Because you need to hear it again. I, one thing I've learned from doing this for many years is the first time I say something, maybe 20% of the people get it. If I have to say it three or four times for most of the people that actually get it, if you don't understand something, stand aside. I would rather see you not trade than take a trade you're uncertain about or is outside of your trading plan, okay? It's one of the biggest, most mature things you can do as a trader is not take a trade. You are not here to trade. You're here to make money. There's a difference. There is a difference. You're not here to trade. You're here to make money. Trading is simply the vehicle that we use to make money. But there's also the possibility you could lose money if you're an idiot, a fool, or don't take good trades. So stand aside if you don't understand. Just go out and execute your plan. Okay, so let's take a look. You guys have seen this before. People who have taken professional trading strategies have seen it. I've done a couple lectures on it. And the reason that I'm bringing it up again is because you can never see it too often, all right? The market moves in stages, in cycles. Stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Most traders are going to make most of their money in stages two and four, right? The demand, greed, and the supply and fear stages. Why? Because those stages have way more follow through. Right? So if you're looking for bigger targets, two, three, four, five R targets, you're going to need the market to help you. Right? See so guys, and this is what happened, I'm gonna say maybe it was October, September, the market was like a yo-yo. The market would be up $5, down $5, up $3, down $2, it was a yo-yo, okay? I mean, literally up and down, up and down. You'd have 100% retracements in all different directions, okay? So when you think about it, that's a challenging environment because you're getting follow through for a very short period of time, five, 10, 15 minutes and the market pivots and it doesn't pivot and pull back, it pivots and p -p 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 pulls back 100%. It's hard to gain big target. And this is where we kind of went more into that scalping mentality, right? And this is where again, traditionally traders make more money in stage two and stage fours. Average investors only make money in stage two. You don't want to be that. You want to become a trader that can make money in all four stages. Yes, it'll be easier in stage two and four, but get good enough to make it in stage one and stage three as well. These are choppy sideways stages, right? Between stage one and stage three. Accumulation apathy, it's a very narrow range stage, right? Very narrow range, no one cares about the market. Whereas stage three is wide and whippy. There's that tug of war between buyers and sellers. Going, no, it's going higher. No, it's going lower. Now, I'm not going to explain this as in depth as I do in PTS because that wouldn't be fair. But you need to understand 
what stage we're currently in and what the next stage is. Well, you can't understand what the next stage is if you don't understand the current stage, right? So make sure you have a good understanding of what the market is doing and what it's likely to do next. So let's take a look here for a minute. All right. Now, this is a recent chart of the Qs. This is a, I don't know, a day or two old. Okay. Now, how do you handle a gap like this? Now you're going, what do you mean a gap like this? I'm talking about this right here. My cursor is on the tip of it right there. How do you handle a gap like that when market is down one, two, three, four days, and then it has a very small gap down on the fifth day? What's your market bias? What should the market do on a day like this? What should the market do? We're down four days and we get a very small gap down. Talk to me. What should the market do? on this day. Now, obviously we know what it did because we can see it, but what should it do? Four days down, small gap down. Very, there's a lack of confidence here, right? Dustin says bounce. Scott says move lower then bounce. Michael says up, KL says short, right? Levi says bounce, but here's the conundrum. Why? Why? Why should it bounce? Well, the answer to that is because we're down four days. And you told us, Jared, in professional trading strategies that anytime we see three days down, and then we see four days down, then we see five days, right? So every time you see a day down, you're like, oh, well, the market's going to bounce the next day because we're down so many bars. But here's the problem. This is true. We're down a lot, but guess what? There's nothing here. There's nothing here. Take a look around you. Not until you get down to the low two six, there's, there's nothing down here. So the only reason the market should bounce is if it's really tired. But at the same time, there's no real reason to bounce. So this is one of those conundrums. I'm bringing it up because it just happened. The market bias should be short, but questionable, right? So it's very hard to go against a non-climactic 60 minute downtrend. By the way, we have a slide called rules to never break. Rules to never break. And one of the rules to never break is go long in a defined 60 minute downtrend. Well, that's clearly what this is, clearly. Lower, 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 lower. If you draw a trend line on this bad boy, you are below it. Rules to never break. Don't go long in a defined 60 minute downtrend until you put in a higher high and a higher low. We don't have that. We don't have it, right? Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We don't have it. So you have to come into this day with a bearish bias. The problem is we're four days down. This is the fifth day down. Do you see where I'm going? How sometimes the picking a market bias is not so easy. These are the days where you want to have a list that has something on both sides. Because yes, the likelihood we go lower is high, but we may get to a point we might get to a point during this day that the market becomes so weak, so oversold that it actually becomes greedy, like Troy is suggesting, right? We might get to that point during this day. Now, it didn't happen. It did not happen that day. But you may go, wow, market's down five days. People are starting to value shop here, right? They're trying to pick up some value. That's a possibility. But the point of this slide is some days are easy. Some days are really, really easy to pick a market bias. And some days are really, really hard to pick a market bias. Okay? But you still need to have an understanding of it. So, take a look at this. Okay? This is a full market cycle. All right? Now, this is a stock. It could be the market, it could be a stock. But understanding this process will not only help you with your market bias every morning, 
It will also help you with stocks, intraday trading, and swing and core trading. Right? This is a weekly time frame, so you could argue this could be a core trade. So if we start on the left, we have this narrow range stage one right over here, all the way to the left, all the way over, narrow range stage one. Then we start to slowly break out, slowly break out of the stage one. We move above the 50 period moving average. We pull back. You actually get a little bit of a buy setup over here. We move up, we pull back. We're still kind of in the range though. So I kept it stage one, this whole area stage one. We finally move up kind of significant. We, we pull back, we move up, and then we're, we're firmly in an uptrend at this point. Then we get this little sideways consolidation. Now, granted, it didn't get too far back to the rising MA, but I would consider this a pause that refreshes. This is basically still a stage two, but it's pausing to catch its breath so it can continue the move higher. And that's exactly what happened. Pause that refreshed. It refreshed the stage two uptrend. Continues higher pulls back and you think, all right, we're getting a buy setup here. And you are. But note, note, from this area here, $80 to here is 140. That's a big move up. We are far, 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 far away from this moving average right here. Okay. So when you see this buy setup right there at $120, man, that's a tough one. It's tough. I mean, when we're in the middle of the pandemic, you know, everything just moved up. It didn't matter. So I could see how someone would reasonably take this buy setup at 120. And they would have stuck, been stuck there for how many months? Nine months? I mean, literally, it bounces, pulls back, bounces, pulls back, bounces, pulls back, bounces. I mean, look at it. <laughs> it literally, this buy setup over here took probably, I don't know, eight months, nine months. And then finally, 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 it gives you a $20, $25 move on what was probably about a $10 stop loss. You finally got two to one. Whew, thankfully. And then, but what happens? It does not put in a significant new high. It puts in a little peekaboo high. So now all of a sudden, what do we have? We have a range. Now, it's a nine-month range, and it's a fairly wild range. Oh, what's a fairly wild range? But stage three, right? So now we have a little double top, a little M top. Okay, we retested the prior high, barely broke above it, and immediately went lower. Now we know if, if we break this red line, sorry, green, if we break the green line where the buyer stepped up once, twice, three times, four times. It is over, O-V-E-R, over. This is a great core trade entry. $110 entry, $140 stop. I get it, it's wide, core trades are wide. $30 stop loss, you're gonna have to do what? Short it and look to add back later, that's it. You take the initial trade with a very wide stop loss and then you look to add back. That's how you're gonna treat this. And then it drops below, so it triggers you in, right? Drops below, bounces up. Now you have a little sell set up, minor pivot. It's more of a minor pivot. So perhaps now you can add on the sell set up. Again, minor pivot, not really a sell set up, okay? And then perhaps lower your stop to this pivot, which is like 130. Now you've tightened the stop to $20. Goes lower, bounces, add here. Now tighten the stop again. Over here, it gives you a really nice sell setup. $82 entry, $90 stop loss. You already have it at 110, so add, 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 add. Pulls all the way back. Where's the target? Right over here, right? If, if we're looking at this again, it's going to be somewhere between here. Oh, I hate when they do that, okay? And here, that's your target area, okay? That is your target area, 60 to 40. Well, it bounced off 60 pretty good, didn't it? That's your target area. The high of this pivot area here, the low of this pivot area here, this range from 40 to 60. You got in at 110, it's a 50 to $70 move. I say it's pretty damn good. And if you add it along the way, this trade probably turned into like a 4R trade, give or take, okay? But you need to understand how these market cycles work. 
because if you don't, you don't know what's going to happen next. And our job as traders is to predict the future, right? That's what we do. That's what we use technical charts for is future predictions. All right. Same thing here. This is Tesla on a weekly chart. Stage one over here. Nobody cared about Tesla. Moves up, pulls back, rips, right? Rips in early 2020 with the pandemic, it just ripped. It went from, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks all the way to 150. And then you get this consolidation back towards the moving average again. Pause, that refreshes, moves up, pulls back. This buy setup fails, but holds. So this is an area I would initially start to think maybe if we break this area right here, if we break that area, we might head into a downtrend. Lower high, never put in the lower low. Is that sometimes we can be fooled. Sometimes we can be tricked, right? Sometimes it looks like it's gonna be a stage three turning into a stage four and it doesn't, right? So we have to go with the information we have. So in this case, it doesn't break the prior low. It stays above the moving average and bounces back up. Puts in a pretty much, you could argue, very much so, a climactic top, right? The volume spike wasn't that great, but the bars were crazy big. You know, for a four or five month period there, not four or five, these are weeks. So about a five week period, Tesla was like unstoppable from 250 up to 400. And then what? Pulls back double tops puts in a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. You are in a downtrend. In fact, let's go back real quick so I can steal one of these bars, okay? Let's put this on here. Shoot. All right, let's put one of these on here. Let's move that up somewhere around there. Okay, I mean, you are basically, I'm cutting through too much price here. You are basically in a downtrend, right? And you can see the channel this thing is setting is impressive, right? It's a very impressive channel. I, there's nowhere for this thing to go, but lower. Yes, we are nearing a support area. You can see it to the left, that 150 to 130, one, yeah, 100 to 150 area right there. But man, this thing is just gonna continue lower. Maybe you see a shallow bounce, but the one thing bulls don't want to see is a bounce here and then a lower high again. The lower high should be somewhere between 200 and 250, right? If we bounce back up on Tesla, right, it should be somewhere around 200 to 250 would be the lower high and then it continues to go lower. 200 would be the ideal area, right? That's minor price resistance and then it continues lower. You just broke the 200 MA, et cetera. But this is how stocks transition, okay? Now, take a look at this. The market is your guide. So on the left is the stock, on the five minute, on the right is the market, okay? So if we start with the market, right? We gap up a little bit, we go higher, we pull back, we stay above the MA, we bounce. We put in a double top, double top on the market. So this doesn't mean that we're in a micro stage four. It just means we need to question the strength of the buyers, right? We're questioning the strength of the buyers because if you pull back to support and you have a little bottoming tail, you should put in a new high. Yes, you should. Even if you chop around, even if you pull back a little, you should still put in a new high, but you don't. You put in a lower high and then the dagger, a lower low. So notice you put in an M top, double top here, lower high, breaks beneath the moving average, breaks beneath the second moving average, and then right here, right around 1130, you put in a lower low. Lower highs equal weakness, lower lows equal weakness also. So now your opinion of this market must change. You may have gone into today with a bullish bias and the buy setup right here looked bullish. That's okay. And if you went long, fine, no problem, no problem. But the second you start to pull back and break this area where my cursor is right there, okay? It is over, over for the longs, okay? You gotta start thinking short.
This is how you can change your bias in the middle of a day. And what do you do? Well, you have a stock that looks strong, but the stock is a little bit weaker than the market with a lower high. The market put in a lower high, but it was pretty close to retesting the prior high. This stock was not close to retesting. So then the stock starts to put in a lower high and a lower low. And all of the sudden, you get a sell setup. And note the time, right around 11.30ish, what do you get in the market? A little mini sell setup just past 11.30. This is, again, how you can flip a bias from a stock that was a little bit long, okay? And you can see here on the top, look at the 200 MA. That should tell us the declining 200 MA up top here on a five minute means overall the stock was in a higher time frame downtrend. Higher time frame downtrend, okay? Now, you get the lower high and get the lower low. The next lower high, what do I have? Second lower high and hopefully second lower low. The market's gonna give me the same look. Market drops, stock drops. Why? Because the market should drop. That's what it's supposed to do. And the stock the same. And the stock is showing slight relative weakness to the market. Notice the flat MAs over here on the left. Notice the rising MAs on the market. So this stock was already weaker than the market. Okay? So lower high, lower low, lower high, hopefully a new lower low. And then what happens? The market puts in a wide range bar on massive volume. Is it climactic? Not full climactic. No, it's like a mini climactic. What are you expecting? What's the expectation? A bounce. Do I expect this bounce to change the entire trend of the market? No, but I do fully expect a bounce because this is a wide range ending bar on ending volume. No, it because when you see it in the market, you're gonna see it in the stock. And when you see it in the stock, the move is finished, right? The move is finished. Now, could you scalp that long? Maybe, it's an aggressive scalp long, but maybe. For me, for me, it has to be a full climactic for me to buy that. But if you're scalping, maybe you get away with it. I don't really wanna go long until we break the trend line or break the moving average. Okay, so the first real long area for me would be something over here, right where my cursor is, right there at like 1.45 in the afternoon, right there, okay? Wow, I have way too many slides in here. All right, same thing here, all right? Look at the market, look at the stock, okay? Look at the market, look at the stock, all right? Moves up, chop, 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 retest. No, it doesn't retest, it puts in a new low. Okay, and when you look at this, that bottoming tail suggests higher prices. And then it bounces. This stock has already done what? Double bottomed. It already had a little mini double bottom right here, right? That big bottoming tail is powerful. Retested it right here. And then the gap up with the move higher is kind of the, the third time is a charm, right? Meaning tested once, tested twice, it passed both tests. The next time, it's probably gonna bounce. But what makes it even more secure, what makes it even more bullish, what makes it even better, it put in a higher low. Higher low, not an equal low down at the green line, put in a higher low. So now all of a sudden, we have a higher high and a higher low. That's good, that's a sign of a transition that we're moving, remember, micro time frame here, micro, 15 minute chart, micro time frame. We're moving from a micro stage four downtrend into a triple bottom micro stage one into a transition. This is right out of professional trading strategies. Bounces, pulls back, bounces. And the market's helping you do it. multiple time frame analysis, right? This day, the market was an obvious short, right? It broke under 119 right there, and that's an obvious short. You can see the declining moving averages going lower, going lower, going lower. That's good, that's what you wanna see, right? So, <clears throat> bias is lower, 60 minute stock, looks great. There's your breakdown. That's as easy as it gets. Do we get these every day, this perfect? No, but that's what your job is. Go in, find a clear, concise market bias, and find a stock that's generally weak and has room to drop, 
Okay, it's very nice. Getting them is challenging, finding these when they're this perfect, but they happen, okay? Now, let's take a look at this. All right, what should we do? Ooh, what should we do? So if we take a look at the SPY, right? We always wanna start with the market, okay? We gap down on the SPY, and the first, you know, eight minutes of the day, the market is just chopping, right? Topping tail, bottoming tail, topping tail, topping tail, just chop, 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 chop. And then the market starts to break, right? Nope, it starts to break. And we have room down to what? Not like 391-ish, right? You can see it right here. We have room down to about there. We have a stock on the three minute looking quite lovely. Wide range red bar, red bar, red bar, a little green bar, but look, look how tight this is getting. Each bar is getting narrower and narrower and narrower. I mean, it's just gorgeous, right? Just beautiful. We're gapping under a 60 minute bar on, on the 60 minute chart, like a green 60 minute bar right there at 97. We're at 95, 97, this is 90. Where are we at? What, what is this green line, guys? What's the expectation during this green line? What's the expectation? I mean, bottoming tail, bottoming tail, bottoming tail. What's the expectation? Right there. Hmm. No one knows? Where are you guys at? Talk to me. The expectation is a bounce. Why? because the last three times it came into this $96 area, it bounced. All you have is the past to go on to help predict the future. It's no different than learning a history lesson in your history book. We look at the past, try to figure out the future, okay? We should have some form of bounce here. Shallow bounce, something, but it should probably be some form of a bounce. But we have a conundrum. The market's looking lower. I have a damn near perfect pattern. And you're telling me, bounce? Why did I bring this up? Because this was an idea in the chat room, right, that somebody asked me about. And I told them, the market's going lower, the stock could go lower. But if we are technical traders, this suggests a bounce. There's no, you know, consolidation at 96 or anything like that. And then what do we do? It worked, right? It worked. This is on a three minute chart. That bar eventually triggered. This stock went a dollar, I don't know, 20 on what was probably a 30, 40 cent stop loss. The market kind of continued lower, right? Should we have taken it? The answer is no. But the reason I brought this slide out it's for twofold. One, stick to what you know. What you know is that support, support suggests a bounce, especially when it's been tested two or three times. Support suggests a bounce. But the second reason that I brought this, this out is to show you the market is always right. Now, this doesn't mean you should have taken this trade. It's just simply saying market weakness usually wins, right? Whoops, wrong slide. Market weakness usually wins, okay? So the market continued lower down into the support area, and then this stock went lower. So I don't want you guys using this as an excuse going, well, geez, Jared, the market's gonna go lower, so I'll try MP MPC. You could. I'm not telling you it's the worst idea in the world, but you really should hold off when the stock is at 60 minutes support, triple bottom bottoming tails. Because what if the market just turns around and goes higher here? But it worked. So the point there is twofold. One, the market drags everything with it most of the time. And two, stick to your plan, guys. Stick to your plan. All right, now, what should we do here? What should we do here? Market gapped into resistance, okay? 
Note the first four bars of the day for the SPY. I want you to take a look at the first four, first four bars of the day for the SPY, okay? Green bar with a topping tail, doji, doji, doji. CCJ, well, well, start with the daily. Okay, looks good over 30. I think we have that, that's good. Good gap up. So we're good on the daily, right? We scanned, we're good. Nice gap up, needs to break 30 bucks, we'll be good. Okay, cool. First green bar of the day breaks above 30. Perfect, perfect. Second bar, narrow range bar. We now have a three bar play that is forming in a market that is kind of going sideways. It's not really weak, it's not really strong. Then we get a little shakeout, ba boom And that is a beautiful shakeout. Like it's not nice, it's beautiful. It's the kind you dream about. And then all of a sudden you're looking there at like $30 and I don't know, 35 cents, 40 cents, whatever it is. Should we take this? Good entry should have a question mark, right? There should be a question mark there. I need some audience participation. Get the wheels turning in those Einstein brains of yours. Should we take this? What do you guys think? Lack of market strength is a concern, but the stock has serious relative strength. I'm not sure. Michael says I wouldn't. Seems like it didn't break daily resistance. Really? The daily resistance was $30, Loveless. This is at $30.40, correct? Right? I'm, I mean, the line, the red line on the daily chart's about 30 bucks. I mean, it, it most definitely broke 30, especially with market at resistance. You see, the problem we're having here is most people just don't know, and they don't want to say they don't know. You're waiting for me to give you the answer because you just don't know. I mean, we get way more responses than this usually. You guys just aren't sure. So, what's the answer to the question? There's the, the, the boilerplate answer. When in doubt, finish the sentence. When in doubt, finish the sentence. Stay out. If you're not sure right now, like if you're sitting here waiting for me to tell you the answer, then you shouldn't be taking this, right? Obviously, okay? Stay in that shares. <laughs> um, if you're not sure, don't take it. But let's break it down. The daily is quite nice, right? It's really nice, okay? The two minute is pretty damn nice, especially with that bottoming tail, okay? The problem we're having is the market. The market is sitting at 394, give or take, 394 double top resistance on the two minute time frame. Whew, boy. Yeah, but you don't know there's a topping tail, Troy. That's the problem. You didn't know the topping tail till after you got in it. See what I'm saying? This, when you guys got in it, was a green bar. This daily is not a daily topping tail right? That's a green bar during the two bar or three bar play here, four bar play. So we can't say there was a topping tail there. It wasn't a topping tail. It was a nice green bar at the time. The problem for us is this topping tail on the spy. I'm going to be honest with you. This is really hard because the stock suggests it should go higher. The market suggests neutrality. Because let's be honest here, there is a little bit of junk below us. The market shouldn't really just tank. It did. It did just tank. I mean, it lost $5. But this is not the normal modus operandi. Now, obviously, it would be nice to have more information. I want to know, you know, what's the daily look like on the SPY? What's the 15 look like on the SPY? If the 15 on the SPY looked decent, then you might suggest, hey, the SPY is going to break 394, and this is a no-brainer trade. So the answer to the question is really, it depends on what the higher time frame looks like. If the higher time frame of the SPY looks decent, 
and looks like perhaps it should break above 394, then I'm going to take the CCJ. If the higher time frame of the SPY is smacking its head into like 60 minute resistance, I'm probably not going to take CCJ. So for this one, I'm going to need more information, right? Oh, there's definitely an argument to be made, PS, to take it. And our market bias on this day might have been long. And if it was, then you might take it, right? The reason I put this slide on here is because it shows that not everything we do is clean and clear cut. Even when you have all the information, sometimes there's a little bit of gray in there, you know? Um, so it's just one kind of interesting comment, I guess, one interesting slide, because this in a normal market, normal world is an unbelievably good pattern. It's breaking above 30 on the daily. It's got a nice shakeout bottoming. To, it's perfection personified. And most of the time, I'll go with perfection over the market. Unless the market's just insanely weak. right? But most of the time, I'll go with the perfect stock over the market. Okay? Now, what do we have here? Another stock, transition buy opportunity. I'm showing you these guys because these are cycles. They're not, it doesn't always have to be in the market. It could be in a stock. This is a cycle in a stock. This is a stock that put in a double top right here. You can see the 200 MA is in a downtrend, double top right there, M top, double top, okay? Once it breaks below 25 bucks, it is O-V-E-R, it's over. Drops, bounces, drops, lower low, lower high, lower low. Just think about it. Right here, we have a double top. Then we put in a lower low, one. Lower high, one. Lower low, two. Lower high, two. That's a downtrend. Stays below the trend line. Stays below the declining moving average. Bounces, pulls back. But note, right here, this is the beginning. Puts in a higher low. Is this an actionable event? No. No. But it puts in a higher low. It's my first kind of things that make you go, hmm right higher low maybe the stock could be transitioning but not yet you're if you're scanning your universe of stocks you know you have your two three four five hundred stock universe for swing trades this is going on your list on the long side right when you see the higher low you're putting it on kind of the questionable list the second that it puts in a higher high which is over here so higher low step one breakage of the trend line Step two, breakage of the moving average. Step three, a higher pivot high. Step four, actionable event is the higher low buy setup. This is where you're in this stock. You should have been watching this for, for a couple weeks, couple weeks, just waiting, praying. You're in the bushes looking for your prey, right? You're like a, I don't know, lion looking for a gazelle or something like that, right? You're just waiting and waiting and waiting till it gives you what you want, okay? Moves up, pulls back, there's your entry, 15. Bounces, pulls back, there's another entry, all right? And then your target's gonna be that $20 area. Why? If there's a pivot to the left, and then there's a declining 200. But if you're in at 15, a $5 move is no joke. That's 33% move. This is a stock in transition. Double top, stage three, into a stage four, into a double bottom stage one retest, into an early stage two uptrend. That's how you do it. Cues. What? I put this on here on purpose. What? I, note, I'm going all over the place. I want to see if you guys are paying attention. We have the market chopping around, chopping around. It's below the 50 MA, below the 200 MA in a downtrend. Bounces, lower low, bounces. All right. See this day here? Pink arrow, doji day. What's your market bias when you wake up? That little green dot is where the market opens, 270.4. What is your bias the second the market opens? Pre-market, you're putting together a bias for the cues. What's your bias on this day? Pre-market, you're putting a bias together. Hey, what direction do I think the markets are going to go today? What is it? Strong, that's your bias, strong. It's gapping down and your bias is long. It's interesting, okay? The bias here should be bearish neutral, right? 
bearish neutral. You're gapping below yesterday's low in a firm, firm daily downtrend, at least in the last month, right? From September to October, the market has shown no preponderance to really, really want to bounce hard, okay? So you're inside yesterday's bar, but you did gap down and you have room, a little bit of room to go lower. So I'm looking at this day as a bearish bias with a little bit of a neutral hint to it. This is one of those days you better darn well prepare for both sides. But why would you ever have a long bias on this? Guys, I gotta ask you a question here. I mean, really, for those of you saying long, what is the market doing here? I mean, look at this. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. What, do you think it's just gonna pivot and rip higher right here? Unless you have some type of news report, there is no reason whatsoever the market should bounce on this day. What's most likely gonna happen on this day is what happened, an inside narrow range day, because the previous day was a pretty big day. So what actually happened here happened, was, was supposed to happen a bit of a narrow range day. Moved up a little, moved down a little, right? Narrow body bar, buyers and sellers fighting. You are, this is your downtrend line here. You should be going lower. You shouldn't be bouncing lower high, lower high, lower high. Look, gonna get another lower high. But one thing I'm noticing during today's lesson and that I'm asking is facts. Most of you just aren't sure. This is real stuff. Yes, there are days where the bias is easy. Look at this day over here, right there. We gap over a big red bar, duh, easy bias. You get an easy bias one or two days a week. The other three days you're fighting for your bias, right? Because it's tough, it's hard, right? Here's a day right here, one, two, three, four days up right there. See it right here, right there. Let me draw a little arrow on it so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here, okay? right there see that day guess what i had i'd have a short bias on this stock mark it gapped down into a green bar after four days up it gapped down into a green bar after four days up. what happened the market went higher there's days where the bias is tough right most of the days the bias is tough okay and that's where picking relative strength or weakness or or waiting for confirmation 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes pays off okay now a few more we take a look at this and i apologize i know it's a little small to see it's hard to see i apologize but i want you to take focus on the yellow box. Take a look at the yellow box, okay? This was the short list for this day. The yellow box. A, B, T, Baidu, A, L, L, Y. All right? Good job, Berto. I like that. That's a good idea, okay? Those are, those are my three short ideas. The question is why? Why? This is the short list for that day, right? This is the pre-market list on this particular day, uh, October or whatever it was, okay? This is the list. Why did I pick those three stocks? Well, my market bias was weaker on this day, but let's take a look. Now I blew it up so you could see it, okay? This is the same list you just saw on the previous screen. Same exact list. Ally, that's the daily chart. Stock is in a downtrend, declining 20, declining 50, right? Stock is in a downtrend. This is the pre-market of ALLY. Look at the big red bar. Look at where are we at? $26.20. Ooh, baby. I'm gapping under a green bar, under a double bottom pivot with nothing below. And look at the beautiful pre-market chart. This is how you can use pre-market charts to help you get in earlier on really good gaps. 
the market bias is weak, the gap is under a green bar, the gap is under double bottom, and the pre-market looks beautiful. It's an easy choice. And I got it right from there. And look at the pre-market volume, 415,000 shares. That's awesome. That's a lot. Right off, my says it right there. Dollar losers. Trade station, pre-market dollar losers. That's it. It's not some fancy scan. Another example. What do we have here? Baidu. What's Baidu doing? Oh, there's a green line. Pivot, pivot. I need this thing under 100 bucks. I need it under 100 bucks. It's at 99.29 in the pre-market. I can see that right here. It's got all of this void below it at $100. There's the pre-market right there. Right around 100 bucks. There's my pre-market chart right there. What happens to this bad boy? Boom. Oh, that's it. That's Baidu on that day. There's your pre-market. Goes a little further on the pre. And then look at your beautiful sell setup you get there. And this thing just died. It went $8 lower. Notice the transition on the daily here. Triple top. Once it breaks 130, this stock is done. Right? Once it breaks this area. Right there. Stock is done. Drops. Bounces. Lower high. Lower low. Once it breaks this area, that's it. All right, so I know there was a lot of slides in here, guys. And we kind of mixed and matched between market bias, stock bias, the different stages. We focused a lot on downtrends today. Why? Because the market's in a downtrend. I want you guys understanding what's currently happening in the markets. Stick with the trend. When in doubt, go with the trend. Don't try to buck the trend, it costs money. All right. When in doubt, if the market is very clear, and it may take 15 minutes, 20 minutes to determine um, the direction. But once you determine the direction, go in that direction most of the time. Even with relative strength and weakness, try to find a relatively strong stock in a strong market. Relatively weak stock in a relatively weak market. Okay. It's rare that you can have a market go straight up and, and short a stock and get away with it. It's rare. It can be done. It's just rare. It's hard money. All right, so I hope that you guys learned a little bit about the market stages, developing a bias, okay, picking a watch list, hopefully also using your fellow traders in the chat room. I'm not kidding. Gap list, carryover list, okay? Use other experts in the chat room. These people are good. Even, even people that are just newer traders, they might have a really good idea. What's it take you, five seconds to check out their idea? It might be the idea of the day that makes you all the money. It takes you an extra couple minutes a day. Do it. All right? So I hope you guys took something from this lecture. I hope it will help make you a better trader. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week. Mm -hmm.